Okay, off the dome. Hopefully this fits. I think it will. The webcam will fit. Uh, so forget this top section in money, 150 grand a month, roughly, for that stage. This video is about why do I want the money, and it gets deep, deep, deep into my story, deep into uh, my darkness, basically. This this dark side of me, uh, this dark cabinet that I've avoided opening and cleaning, full of of pain and very strong feelings. Like I've since making this document yesterday. Like I've just been, it's like it a wave of it just poured onto me these rough feelings that I remember so well and very familiar with. So. Why do I want this money? I want it to live my innermost purpose, which is to honor God with my finances because he gave his first and best for me, also known as Jesus Christ. That is God's tithe to us. Why don't we just, why aren't we tithing our resources and our, uh, yeah, our resources? I would be pointless dust without God. I want to serve my parents and take care of them, as well as the people around me. These I need these funds for my personal brand and most of mostly automotive content, but in general, self-improvement would be goal to lead gentlemen, well, really everybody to Jesus, but obviously main target audience is young men that were in my position. Why? Because I want to feel needed and useful. Why? Because as a kid, I was not accepted nor as popular, and throughout my life, I seek to be adequate and of use. Why? As a kid, my father was working a lot. I didn't have many friends at school and was always scared of what people thought of me. I was very, I'm only child. I'm quite isolated throughout my life. Why? I want to be viewed as flawless and I want to feel accepted. Why? I was basing my value and self-worth based on interactions with people and how accepted I am. Why? The devil planted the seed that seed of inadequacy to derail me of my purpose that God has for me. Why? The devil wants to kill, steal, and destroy anything of God. Why? He wanted authority over heaven, failed to take the throne, so now he does his best to derail us. Why? Because he got filled with pride. Why? Because he focused on him. He was focused on himself. He was selfish in not being a servant of the Lord. That's like the whole backstory. And obviously, I don't know what's after that. I'll know once I'm in heaven. But this is the rough part, which... I just breeze through that light work, baby. Extrapolate on your need for value and self-worth and where it led you. This need for self-worth came from being a bit weird in school and misunderstood. I wanted to please everyone, so I wasn't fully myself in order to be accepted. These wants led to my escalation of porn addiction in middle school. My sexual immorality was my coping to feel wanted. The resulting shame and guilt from this addiction made my day-to-day even worse, stronger feelings of inadequacy. If you know about shame and guilt, you will beat yourself up. You will not look anyone in the eye. Deep down, you know what you did, and you're just thinking about you're thinking about it like everyone else knows. Like a normal conversation. You're just scared like crap. That is proper social anxiety. That's what it gives you. I viewed the pleasure and sex on the screen as a vehicle to my desire want which was to be wanted, the feel to be wanted. The content was either a was either sensual in a couple in service and passionate love for each other or a very dominant type of video where the woman is submitting under the man and the guy is viewed as wanted. It even escalated to art form types of content because of the storyline. These forms of content often had the plot of a Joe Schmo that was mediocre and ended up with sexual partners. The women were either very provocative or the guy was getting the action through leverage. Not my proudest moment. This is a very perverted view on physical intimacy between what should be husband and wife. Most of my life, I have shielded myself from the judgment of my most authentic self. I think back to how it, relate, how it affected my relationship with God and youth group peers. I would be coming to church on Sunday after relapsing either the previous night sometimes that very morning 
Back then, I always had social anxiety because I was shameful and afraid of the judgment of what I had done. It is why I originally left church back in December of 2022. I had a rage for myself and a distaste for the progress of my peers. I felt like the ultimate failure. I was basically the eldest in the group, yet was still battling this addiction. I would walk on stage with fright and difficulty speaking, no confidence. I would compare myself with all the other people. They were all younger and they would be doing more. Getting on stage, preaching sermons, speaking, reading out notes. Uh, they would be on the worship team, all these things. And I was just under oppression of my social anxiety and I would not be doing those things. You would not catch me doing those things for the most part. I compared and felt inadequate. I was truly fed up with my environment where I felt like a complete failure. I was pissed off at myself for not being celibate. I understood that I would be a different, completely different man if I had been celibate all this time. All right, here comes the biggest L, the biggest paragraph. I think back to my original accepting of Jesus as my Lord and Savior. A month later, I went to my first youth camp met the pastor's daughter and basically became obsessed. She was the ultimate example of feminine, uplifting, encouraging, and bold young women of God. Not too soon later, quite pretty. This obsession was basically idolizing and basing my value on her. What interactions would I get from her was I wanted. This was back in freshman year of high school, completely focused on the wrong thing. I was basically focused on people pleasing this girl to feel wanted when I should have just been focused on the, my relationship with the Lord and bettering myself. As time went on, I was continuing in my sexual immorality, not growing. I understood this, she understood this, and fast forward, she looks to other guys, later getting an actual boyfriend. Na naturally, when you base your value on someone and their interaction with you, when their attention goes to someone else, you get jealous. Throughout this was a constant war between me walking in purity and being a slave to my fleshly desires. The pent up hate and shame for myself, this growing feeling of inadequacy towards this girl, I started to basically ignore her completely. Throwing away the pr friendship, I was treating her like trash. I understood she was always available to help me. I even remember this iconic moment uh, the last time I was at church. I was up on the stairs, she was on the bottom, her boyfriend was below. below. She asked if everything was all good. I had the emotional maturity of literally a three-year-old. A three-year-old will deny if you the mental maturity of what a three-year-old has is you'll deny the problem that there's even a problem. You won't. That's basically what it was. I denied that there was even a problem, like a freaking three-year-old. Clearly, there was a problem. While she asked, I couldn't help but stare at the poor guy. I was like a, it was like a trance too. I just naturally like looked at him for some reason. I don't know. He decided to walk away and I just dismissed the problem of dismissed the idea of any problem with me. I cannot think of a bigger moment of immaturity, cowardice and insecurity from me. Both these feelings of inadequacy and worthlessness drove me to a rageful period of hate for myself. I intentionally stayed in bed so that my dad wouldn't go to church. We haven't been there since. I regret a lot of my decisions. I want to prevent any story like that from happening to other young men. Sexual immorality, idolizing, people-pleasing leads to destruction. This led to a formative isolation period for me. I believe it was the best to protect my youth group friends from bad relationships from my end. Because I was bitter. And making space for me to actually go deeper in relationship with God, not to look good for some girl but out of not to look good for some girl but out of love for god this did however lead to one of my longest streaks of celibacy the first two weeks were out of rage for myself bro i was pissed off you think i was i was very pissed off i was doing push-ups very angrily often i didn't read a bible i didn't listen to worship i was it was me and i was pissed off at myself you would not catch me you think i was going to do that then i later became disciplined towards all aspects of life especially the word prayer and worship i accepted that 
I wasn't going to be able to continue this by my own strength. So I picked up my Bible. I repented and I said, Lord, I want to work with you. You are my, you are my strength, not my, my own strength will not get me there. It won't. I cannot walk celibately, truly, by myself. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of work, by, by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. I started to get a glimpse of the blooming Jake that was celibate, disciplined and diligent, and most importantly, for the Lord. Bruv, I was doing work on time. I started like working out. At f I would wake up at five and start working out. I was disciplined. I'd have my protein shake every day. I would be uh, in team sports. I'd be playing basketball every single day, getting a cardio. I got up to 138 pounds in five weeks. I was just bulking. I was just I was eating properly. I wasn't tracking calories or nothing, but I was I was eating. I would come home from school starving, have a bowl of cereal, then a honey sandwich, then dinner. Like I would eat a lot of stuff. Oh crap. Uh sorry for the inconvenience. So 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 where was I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially where I worship. I saw a glimpse. Most importantly, more most importantly for the Lord, becoming carefree of others' opinions. Bro. Celibacy is so freaking awesome. Conversation is a breeze. Social interaction is a breeze. Obviously, don't isolate yourself. You need social anxiety. Not social anxiety. Social interactions. That's why this, uh, one, making YouTube videos twice a day has helped a ton. And my discords, Discord servers, those have helped a ton. And the private group, of course, group calls. Very, very important, my friends. I still have journal entries from that time. In the five weeks I gained weight, felt the best I ever had. My social life was phenomenal. No more social anxiety. I naturally looked people in the eye. I started to gain a bit of an aura and attracted people. However, I was isolated for the most part and settled for worldly friends at school. I would share a laugh over some crude joke, but deep down I would feel the grieving of the spirit. Worldly friends, not friends practicing God's law making me well not making me but i put myself in the position to i would be making those crude jokes with them language just being foolish uh this streak ended when i had a dream of me being sexually immoral sexually immoral again leading to a wet dream i felt felt that i had lost all that i had built and felt i had nothing to lose and chose it's a decision to go back to my old ways the rest of 2023 was mediocre and in sin. I understand now that this was a super formative time, though I have regrets and wish to reconcile with everyone. In one way, I am thankful for my period of porn and masturbation. Luckily, I wasn't celibate for long enough to gain enough confidence to end up fornicating with some girl and then having to deal with a soul tie. Because there are spiritual bondings when you have sex with someone. No one talks about that. People don't... Uh, that's not talked about. You have STDs, sure, physical disease. But if somebody has like a spirit of lust, a spirit of anger or something, like you, when two become one through intercourse, as said in the Bible, between husband and wife, supposed to be, is a glue. If that person has that spirit, it's going to be coming on to you. It's like one example is like gluing two pieces of paper together and then if you rip them apart there's pieces of them on to you and pieces of you left on them it's not meant to be broken up it's meant to be husband and wife the rest of your lives uh luckily i wasn't celibate enough to end up fornicating potentially bigger but like what if i got her pregnant all this stuff i wasn't a sure i was getting a bit disciplined but I was not grind. I'm still not like that. I'm not even self-sufficient. Now that I am walking in freedom, my goal is to help other young men that were in my same miserable lifestyle. Learn to know God, walk in freedom, and live out their awesome purpose. I believe that these dark pieces of ourselves are windows for light to shine. I am a expert 
and lust and sexual immorality. That's the beauty of it. I get to be an expert at helping others that were in my position. The best way, obviously, is to walk in freedom. But then the next step is helping others walk in freedom. That's a beautiful 180. That's how we're meant to be with all our struggles. Because we all have our struggles. We are, we're all falling short of God, God's standard. Dang, I still have protein powder on my keyboard. I thought I got that. Yeah, I spilled. Imagine spilling 18 grams of protein on your desk when you're trying to bulk. Sad. Major L. Anyways. That wasn't as bad as I thought. It's freaking 220. I've avoided making this video these in this entire day. But it's it's like a weight's lifted now that I've done it. It's not a big deal. No what there's literally no bigger secret I could tell y'all. Nothing. This is my darkest, darkest truth. It better inspire somebody. <laughs> At least one person. That's what I think about all my videos. At least if it helps one person, I did my job. I need to pray about this video too when it drops. Because there are, I mean, it's most young men. In today's world, today's society, everybody, like literally, most people are watching porn and are fornicating and are just lustful. No sexual discipline. Seeking the short-term pleasure and dealing with those consequences. Instead of building yourself up, following God's law in one day, hopefully. Well, not hopefully, but if it's in God's plan, you get married to a wife in God's timing and of God's standards. And there ain't nothing better than that. God's way is the best way. Trust me. Where the heck would I be? Think about this. Where the heck would I be? Because most of my life, I was just drained. No social. Like, I would get into a bit of a flow state with familiar with people I'm familiar with. Yeah, I'm sure I could talk. But the social anxiety, not working out, just spilling my energy, my drive, my seed. Bro. Where the hell would I be if I was working out back then? If I like, which I did do a bit of work, but what if I was consistent? What if I was retaining? Where the heck would, what if I legit was becoming responsible and loving towards my parents and started this drop shipping thing earlier, which that's when it first arose? Like, I'm glad I didn't get success, success back then because I would have destroyed myself. Because of the lust and lack of self-control. That's why God's timing is important. Because when you're not ready for it, you could go down a very dark path. So yeah. That's my story. We all have dark cabinets. Our childhood, our school life, bullying, whatever it could be. You have to face these things. And true healing, obviously, is giving it to the Lord. And what I mean by that is, like, this pain, this uh, these feelings of inadequacy and lack of self-worth. Hand it to God. Just It's like taking that out to the trash. Just hand it to God. And then reinforce the real truth. Like, for example, for me, no idolizing. My worth does not come from any other man, any woman, any girl, no matter how pretty, no matter what I think of her as. My worth is based off my creator. And he made, he gave us the biggest gift and the biggest sacrifice. He sacrificed his very own son for you and me. So we could go to heaven, the way, the truth, the life. That's what Jesus Christ is. He is the way. The bridge to the Father. We all have a dark cabinet. I mean, literally, before this, before I started recording, just waves, a constant, like a heavy cloth over me. 
that these feelings of just being inadequate, inadequate, not worth anything, don't deserve anything. Like that's a freaking killer. Like the, if you let that take control, if you don't take control of it, you don't take care of it. And I mean, get rid of it. You will go down a dark path. You will not, you won't be able to serve others because you think you're not worthy of serving others. And really, the deep down thing about this, as I said, was I want to feel useful. I want to feel needed. I want to feel wanted. That means becoming a capable man and doing what I need to do every single day. I want to serve my parents, get this money, serve my parents, pay these bills for my parents. Sure, have some good times with automotive stuff and and, and, and personal branding, but I want to take care and, and, and pay back my parents for their sacrifices. I want to set up my future family. Okay, I want to help other young men so that they can take charge of their own bloodline and be a man of substance, man of discipline, man of standards, not afraid of the government, what people think. He has God's standards. He walks in those standards. He's loving, but he can. He has borders. He has boundaries. It's not just about the money, the cars, or the physique. It's deeper than that. All that is materialistic and fleeting. It's not going to make you happy. Giving will make you happy. Serving will make you happy. That's joy. What I've said before is uh, when you put yourself last, that puts your joy first. Because there's a there's no bigger joy for a man to than to provide and serve others, especially the people he loves and the people who took care of him. So yeah, that's my story. And I remember, just I mean literally that just a while ago, it felt like all this progress I've made didn't even exist because of that feeling of. I'm not worth it. You got to be freaking careful. Day 40. Hope you enjoyed. Hope this gave you something to think about. Hope this inspired you. I hope this encouraged you to go clean your own dark cabinet. We all got them. Love you. Jesus loves you no matter what you've done. But you got you to gotta turn to him, man. Like you have your entire life, which every day is a blessing. We don't know when we leave it. You have your entire life to either build, well, start a relationship with Jesus. Or you're going to continue to go without him. And he's not going to force you into eternity with him. And that means hell. And hell isn't, hell wasn't designed for humans. Freaking demons, the most, it's a body that's, I mean, obviously I haven't been to hell yet. It ain't fine. Demons, smell of sulfur, unimaginable heat, uh, freaking bones everywhere and like, nasty bugs that hurt <laughs> i don't know it's a decision to make so i recommend you turn to jesus hope you all have a good one i'll see you guys in the recap